Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Curtis, one of the paleontologists here at Fossil Crates, and today we're on location at the Arizona Museum of Natural History. And I have the pleasure to talk about one of the animals that's right near. I'm born and raised in Arizona, and right next door in New Mexico, we found some really cool specimens. This, for instance, is Zuni ceratops. And Zuni ceratops made all the headlines for all the right reasons when it was discovered and named, because it has brow horns, but no nose horn. And it was found 100 million years ago, 92 to 100 million, somewhere in there. So right at the beginning of the late Cretaceous, in a time that's not well known. And no one expected to find this advance of a ceratopsian this far south, that early in the fossil record. So it caused everyone to go, hmm, where did ceratopsians come from? Because this is a mixture of advanced and primitive ceratopsians. So this is truly a mosaic animal. But one of the things I like about it is it just looks cool. This is a really neat animal. Its eyes are hidden by its horns. You could see nicely to the side, but couldn't see much of anything straight ahead because of these brow horns. This gorgeous frill with these huge windows called fenestrae were up there. And it would have been splendid to have seen in life. Likely, would have, in my opinion, it would have been very colorful. It would have said, hey, check me out. I'm available. Well, we're looking for mates. Or maybe you could flash its colors and say, this is my hill. You leave it alone. Lots of options. And in paleontologists, we have lots of ideas. So this particular animal, Ceratopsian, relative of Triceratops. This one over here, this little meat eater, <laughs> Suski tyrannus. It was just named recently. It is the coyote tyrannosaur. Suski is the word for coyote. And this particular animal is a, is a very, it's about 92 to 100 million year old tyrannosaur that lived in the time of Zuniceratops. So what you see here is, in miniature, a tyrannosaur stalking a, a ceratopsian, just like Tyrannosaurus did in the late Cretaceous with Triceratops. Uh, Siski tyrannus, very fast. You can see it has those long limb bones, really long limb bones, and it's reminiscent of a coyote. It had a lot of speed. Its arms, though, for a tyrannosaur are particularly long. You think tyrann th those arms are probably as long as the Tarbosaurus arms, and yet this animal is extremely extraordinarily much smaller in size. A mouthful of sharp teeth, powerful bite, fast, speedy predator, uh, long, long tail to help it. So it clearly ran down. You can see it has binocular vision. Uh, this thing right here, see if I can get in and stay in the shot. This is called a sclerotic ring. And when you see those sclerotic rings, what you see is those bones that are in that eye piece, and you'll see them a lot of times in fish. Uh, they happen in reptiles, they happen in dinosaurs. The sclerotic ring, those bones, they're in the eye. They're not whole in the eye like a cup. They're actually embedded in the eye to help the eye maintain its shape. Mammals don't have them. So these animals have these cool sclerotic rings. I just, it always amazes me, the bones in the eye. Uh, Really neat. These teeth, these jaws are so delicate. Uh, it had three fingers as well. So we know Tyrannosaurus have two, but there's been a number of Tyrannosaurus discovered with a vestigial third finger. Well, Siski Tyrannus has three fingers. And when you look, I don't think you can see it there. I'll get some pictures up on the screen though. You'll see they're all end in claws. Um, really neat, really exciting animal. This, this time period is not particularly well known. And being from Arizona, even though they're in New Mexico, it was right on the border. So I'm pretty sure they at least hung out in Arizona. Maybe they were even born here and moved to New Mexico. But you can see the unlikely that one Siski Tyrannus is gonna take out a, an adult sized Zuniceratops. It's just not big. The spikes would hurt it, the animals got more power, but smaller Zuniceratopses could definitely have been prey. Also, in this particular time, in this particular locality, there's two other animals. There's a hadrosaur, and there is the therizinosaur, Nothronychus. Uh, the hadrosaur, and I don't know if I'm saying this right, I'm gonna have to track this down, is uh, Jeyawati, J-E-Y-A-W-A-T-T-I. -E it's uh, one animal that I've not heard said aloud, but I'll track it down. So really cool example of wanting to take a bite of it. It's kind of like those videos where the lion's eyeballing the elephant and going, should I? Am I that hungry? I'll move on. I'll find something easier. And that's the right move, Siski Tyrannus. Leave this Zuni alone. He's had enough to overcome. 
One of the interesting things is when you go back in time for the Ceratopsians and the Tyrannosaurus, they started off small. Here you have an ancestral Ceratopsian and it's, it's probably adult size. And here you have an ancestral Siski Tyrannus. And yeah, it could have been a little bit bigger, but it wasn't getting 35, 40 feet long. These animals were not giant. Now, fast forward even 20 million years and you have Despletosaurus, Albertosaurus, Gorgosaurus, good sized predators. Fast forward to the end of the Cretaceous, 30 million years, and you have King Tyrannosaurus Rex. Ceratopsian wise, these animals get bigger and bigger as well. You have this evolutionary arms race where the herbivores get bigger, so the meat eaters get bigger. The herbivores get bigger, so the meat eaters get bigger, or vice versa. And it's not a direct cause, but it's definitely a factor that if you grow up and you get to be bigger and grow, get bigger faster, you're less likely to be eaten. And then you pass your genes on. And then the same with the meat eaters. If you happen to be extra stocky and big, you're able to eat better and take down more animals and you're young, inherit the gene, and then they get bigger. So you have this evolution through time. And that's that sense of gradual evolution. I love me some Zuni Ceratops. It's such a cool, fun-sized Ceratopsian, and it was amazing that it was found where it was and the time period that it was found in it was completely unexpected. One of the things that isn't commonly known, however, is the fact that the squamosal bone, one of the most important bones in the paper, it got almost a full page spread of its own, and it was very difficult for them to even 100% confirm it was a squamosal bone because it was so weird for a ceratopsian. But they went ahead and called it a squamosal and they featured it heavily in the restoration of the skull that was made. However, shortly after the paper came out, it was pointed out that that bone that they said was part of the skull was actually an ischium of a therizinosaur, which they ended up naming Nothronychus. And you can see that bone here. So you have a bone that was misinterpreted and it was put on the face and it turned out to be part of the pelvis. Now, this shouldn't surprise anyone too much because we're working in a bone bed of sorts where very little is articulated, which makes it difficult for you to know exactly what bones go with which animal. And no one at all suspected that there was a Therizinosaur in North America in this time period. So this quarry produced yet another unbelievably cool, rare find. The other animal from these parts, Siski Tyrannus, was also not expected. But being a small theropod, it's a lot easier to figure out what bones go to it. However, one of the mistakes that is present on this and every cast is the fact that its hind foot has three metatarsals that go all the way to the top. And being a Tyrannosaur, this should display the Arctometatarsalian condition. Well, we say should, but I say that because here is a picture of the actual bones. And you can see it has that very narrow tapering tip that looks like a triangle. And I'm not sure why or how this ended up in such a fashion as we do have the hind foot. Maybe the bones weren't prepared at the time the cast was made. That's always a possibility. But you can see that this particular element, which is so important to Tyrannosaur success because it allows mobility, Animals with this triangular middle metatarsal apparently are more mobile. And this mobility existed when they were small and they retained it as they became giant over the years. And perhaps that is one of the reasons why tyrannosaurs seemingly outcompete everything when they show up. Not only is it their sheer size, because they weren't all gigantic, but they do seem to take over, as it were. So I hope you enjoyed this extra footage of our good friends Suski Tyrannus and Zuni Ceratops. I'm Dr. Brian Curtis with Fossil Great Sing. Thank you kindly. Adios.